En zijn kinderen en uh, zijn doen en zijn vrienden en zijn doen hier een picknick en zijn genieten het leven. En nu kunnen we ook doen en ik voel me zoals prinses. Geert van Istendal is a former television journalist. In 1993, he decided to leave his job to focus on writing. His best known work is probably The Belgian Labyrinth, a collection of his essays. We spoke to the author about how Brussels has changed in recent history. Geert van Istendal is a dedicated writer, poet and columnist. After deciding to be a full-time writer in the early 90s, he's written a dozen books about Belgium, Holland and Brussels. In his book Poor Brussels, Arm Brussel, which has unfortunately not been translated, he reveals his view of the city. He feels the responsibility to write about Brussels. My responsibility as, as a writer, as a poet, as a citizen too, is here in Brussels. When I would live, say, in Montreal or in Berlin, my responsibility would be there. But I live in Brussels, and uh, that's why I write about it. The writer is quite outspoken in his work and criticizes many things, amongst which the destruction of beautiful architecture in Brussels. According to Van Istendal, Schumann Square, which represents the political heart of Europe, is also the ugliest square in Europe. Brussels has been described by, by visitors uh, before the Second World War and even after as a uh, uh, beautiful, rather elegant, uh, uh, rather uh, provincial kind of town. And now after the war and then especially after uh, the World Fair of 1958, we started to destroy systematically all this beauty and, uh, well, we did a bad job. Istendal blames Europe for this architectural destruction too, and even wonders whether Brussels can cope with being the capital of the EU. My idea is that uh, Brussels is too small for Europe. Europe has now 400 million, 450 million uh, people, and Brussels has one million. That's absolutely very, very small. And uh, uh, the weight of Europe in this city is very, very heavy. It's, it's destroying the Rue Béliard, Béliardstraat, it's destroying uh, Wetstraat, Rue de la Loi. This square has been completely uh, bombed <laughs> in peacetime. And uh, the result is, is, is absolutely despicable. Spreek, Brussel, spreek. Je hebt zoveel monden en niet één woont de waarheid alleen. Spreek, Brussel. Open je juffersmondje. Laat zien je brokkelende bedelaarsbakkers. Kom, voor de dag ermee. Schaam je niet, stad. Stel ten toon je trotse tuig, je eurocratische gleuven, die deernis opslokken, richtlijnen uitspuwen, telegeleid en trefzeker neerdalend uit de betongrijze lichtschuurlucht. Schaam je niet, Brussel. Spreek en onthul. Laat horen verhalen van Wersel en Warmoes. Veelkoppig je woord. Wie verbergt, pleegt een moord. Geert van Istendaal knows Brussels well. Although he wasn't brought up here, he's lived in Woluwe saint lambert for more than 25 years. He's witnessed many changes in the area. It was an old street. I mean, the people were old. Uh, old Belgians. Uh, many of them uh, retired people from the army. Uh, the barracks were not far away in Etterbeek. Uh, now it is a young street. Young families with uh, little children going to primary school, uh, kindergarten and so on. And it has become uh, an absolutely international street. But predominantly French-speaking Brussels used to be a Flemish city. Since Belgium's independence in 1830, the French-speaking politicians deliberately turned Brussels into a French-speaking city, ignoring the 85% Flemish population by only providing French schools. Historically, Brussels was uh, Dutch-speaking in dialect form, like everywhere. Uh, but. Uh, when you go back to the Middle Ages, but later on too, uh, the French Revolution and 18th century, and well down into the 20th century, the majority spoke a Dutch dialect, which is very beautiful, which I like very much, and which still exists. Don't forget this. 
Being Flemish and belonging to a big minority, Geert van Istendaal almost feels like a stranger in his own capital, but he likes it that way. He once wrote, in my sweet, destroyed Brussels, I always want to feel not at home. I don't want to feel at home in my own city, uh, because that's a challenge. It's a permanent challenge for a poet and a writer, which I am, uh, to renew your thought, your ideas, and even your language in, in this city, in this particular case. The charity association Les Petits Riens